Hey everybody. So we're gonna be taking a look at uh, this scope right now. It's a 90 millimeter Max Sutov at F11. We're gonna just take a quick peek at Jupiter and just see how it looks. In an 18 millimeter eyepiece, you can see Saturn. It's a little small. And I'm using my radiant eyepieces because the eyepiece that came with this is a Kellner, which is a piece of junk. So I'm going to just try to use some decent quality eyepieces. Okay, with the six millimeter radian, it's decent sharp. Okay size as far, uh, I mean 200 power usually for the planets are pretty good. 166 is okay, could be a little bit better. Seems to be sharp-ish, not too much vibration because it's short, so that's good on a nice mount. However, it just seems kind of dim to me. I don't know why. Um, mind you, I did not, I gave it zero cooling time. I just took it out and started observing because it's actually 104. Uh, when I came out, it's probably about 1 8, 1 15 a.m. And um, it's pretty good, it's like rock solid. But it's just, uh, it seems kind of dim to me. So I think what I gotta do maybe tomorrow, if it's clear, I gotta give it cooling time and try uh, when they're in a better position, like maybe between 10 and mid 10, 11, 12, midnight or something. This is just not gonna work. Um, to do a, re a proper review, uh, I don't know. It just, I think I have to do it when it's more optimum in the sky and giving zero cooling does not help it. So it's hard to do a uh, comparison then. So I'm gonna say that's gonna be it for today and we'll see what happens tomorrow. See you guys next time. Okay, everybody, Joe Jaguar back. So we are gonna try to see if it's clear. It's almost getting dark, but it's half clear, half cloudy. So we are gonna try this guy out if it's clear. Again, this is like a no-name brand, 90 millimeter F11 um, Maxutov. And it has a front corrector plate, well, like a well, there's some Max Sutovs that don't, but this one does. I'm um, just letting it cool down now. And we're going to continue the video. Um, I just had a suspicion that maybe when I was viewing it, um, you know, 1.15 a.m. last time, that um, it seemed a little bit darker than what maybe I, I remember a 90 millimeter should do. So we're going to test it out. I mean, maybe... Being a no-name brand, Maxutov, are the mirrors made out of lower transmission uh, reflectivity? Um, the diagonal uh, could be low quality one. I have a 99% dielectric um, inch and a quarter diagonal, so we could try that as well and just see. Or maybe it, maybe it could be that I haven't really used too many uh, 80 millimeter 90 millimeter scopes in a little while because when you of course when you have big suckers uh, like I have and like maybe some of you guys have you don't use the small little guys as often and maybe just from memory um, I'm thinking it's a little lighter and brighter than normal but we will see okay so this little Mac at, with a 32 millimeter Teleview Palazzo it's small, but you can see it. Collimation seems to be pretty decent. Not 100% perfect, but 
I would say close enough where I probably wouldn't touch it. Both in and outside look pretty, like fairly close. Um, I don't think I'll touch it for today anyway. Uh, if it was really whacked out, I probably would have had to. <sighs> Let me just take a drink of coffee there. Okay. Bumping it up to an 11 millimeter Teleview Colossal. That gives us, I believe, 100 power. Sorry, 90 power. And um, you can see Jupiter, four of its moons, three on one side and one on the other side. And two of the moons are actually fairly close together on the left side. You can see a couple bands, but they're very, very minor. Um, or it's kind of a little bit of fudgy. Okay, popping in a 6.7 mead ultra wide angle 4000 series. So that's also a very good eyepiece. Brings us up to 147 power. Definitely Jupiter, much bigger. The moons can be seen. the light but again it's it's not crystal clear what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to take out the diagonal replace it with the dielectric one let's see what happens okay with the dielectric the GSO uh, dielectric 99% uh, you know basically I don't really see the, any difference with the other diagonal that uh, I had on it so maybe it's not the diagonal. Had enough cool down time. Okay, after doing some testing, sorry I had to do that off camera, I just wanted to see what's going on. I think it's the, uh, because it's a no-name brand um, telescope, the mirror is probably just not hand-figured properly. Um, and it's probably, just a little bit washed out so to me seems kind of familiar like when you have a short tube refractor like those 80 millimeter f5 and you push it over 100 power it becomes mushier they call it soft as well so it's not the diagonal so I think it's um, and it's a bit dim so the mirror probably is you know like at 80 six percent reflectivity and it probably just wasn't also made as well as what i recall uh, like the etx 90. i just remember getting better um, views out of it and now i can con confirm um, so it, it's okay but a, a little bit disappointed and that's probably why this guy brand new is about the same price as what the ETX would be on the used market. So it's probably about a hundred dollar difference, but that's got, that's what you, you we get guys. Uh, when you pay for no name brand uh, type of stuff. And of course, if it's like a hundred dollars cheaper, you're just gonna get something that was made um, to less quality, less specs. Uh, the quality control isn't there. Um, but overall the focusing is, is pretty decent. Uh, the finder scope red dots okay uh, the, the diagonal wasn't a problem I guess um, it, was, it was okay whatever came with it um, but it's just I guess it's just not hand figured properly that mirror and uh, the coatings are probably just not up to par it looks decent and maybe for beginners you know you're getting an okay view but for people who has been in the hobby uh, longer I think it just it, it won't be enough it, it, it's okay but it's not great uh, now I'm just going to push it on to uh, Saturn a bit and just look at the rings and then I'll give you my final conclusion. Okay, on Saturn in the 32 millimeter, you know, definitely a small, but um, let's bump up the power. Up to 150. see the rings now 
how the freaking sounds. Formation's not too bad. As I said before, it's decent. I guess as somebody just starting out, seeing Jupiter and Saturn, um, you know, yeah, you can definitely see the rain. The Cassini division is borderline. I, I don't think I clearly see it. I, I don't think a new person would see it too. Um, but you can definitely see uh, the space in between the planet and the ring. Uh, there, but the Cassini div division inside the rings itself, no, and it's about 147 power, I believe. So let me double check. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, okay, that's what that is. So, uh, I think it's just again, it, it's uh, the ETX. If you guys um, are looking for a Max Sutov, um, you know, even the Skywatcher one. It probably would be uh, uh, has a better um, quality control than uh, this no name brand one. So if you're looking for a Max Sutov that's short and portable, give you some power. Uh, the ETX is definitely um, a really good one for its price point. The uh, you can do the Orion as well and the Skywatcher. But I guess with the no name brand, they're giving you um, quite a bit of savings on it. And for a new person, maybe you might be somewhat excited because, you, you know, you are seeing some detail, but, you know, because they have nothing to compare it to. Now, put it up against one of those side by side, and you probably would definitely would see the difference. It's not a little difference. I can see it's kind of, again, I'm comparing it to me. It's like it's the 80 millimeter F5 um, Acromats that has a lot of false color. Okay, there is no false color on here. But the images is really soft. Yes, you can see the planet, you can see the ring, uh, but it's just not crystal clear. So I think that's what you get with these no-name brand, um, uh, cheaper priced uh, Max. Uh, you're getting it cheaper because you know they're probably pushing them out faster. Uh, they're probably not putting uh, the mirrors high quality. Um, maybe the transmission's not there either, and uh, that's what you're getting. So with the proper name brands you're you know you're paying more but you're getting a better quality item so I would say it's okay but not great uh, that's my conclusion of this guy and I let it cool down I'm using really good eyepieces on this thing I changed the diagonal so really collimation looks you know fairly well um, it's just I minute a couple percent off uh, from in and out of focus I'm not even going to worry about it uh, type of thing um, unless that donut wasn't like a nice symmetrical circle, but it, it's fairly good. Um, you know, maybe if this was like an F5 system, you've got to be more dead center to that. But being an F11, you know, uh, a couple percent off uh, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. So I'm going to say probably the mirror is the biggest issue with this guy. Um, and if you're on a very tight budget and that's all you can find, you know, afford, and you need something really small and portable uh, for land viewing, daytime viewing, and a night viewing. Uh, it's not going to be good on large extended objects uh, because it is F11, uh, which refractor is common, F8 and F10, F11. So, but it's just not going to be, you know, three, three and a half feet long. Then it'll be okay. But if you have a little bit more money, I would say go for the good name brands uh, like the uh, Orion. Uh, Skywatcher, the Mead, and um, that's it. Joe Jaguar, out. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe.